Even if you do everything perfectly, even if you do everything as good as you can, your disease can still progress. Perhaps it will do so not as rapidly. That's less of a comfort as not at all, right? My goal for you is to die with prostate cancer cells buried in my gland. But I also want you to have peace of mind, knowing that you put forth best efforts with best information, with the best objective of success. A lot of focus in prostate cancer is based upon the type of cancer. Now, is it aggressive or is it indolent? Let's look at the cell type. We spend far too much energy focusing on the disease that has the man and not nearly as much on the man that has the disease. Perhaps it's not so much the cancer type that has the man, or the type of man that has the cancer. Are you a passive fatalist? Well, we'll see what happens. I'll just listen to the docs. And it's not wrong to listen to the docs. It's wrong to believe that they are like a burning bush and everything that they say is absolute. That's not the case. They have wisdom, they have value, but you're driving the train here, folks. I'm going to talk about supplements, about nutraceuticals. It was a, a term that was coined in the late 1970s. The idea that we can apply nutritional substances to affect disease outcomes to support health. It was novel then, and it's novel now. Well, what does your doctor have to say about it? Well, most conventional doctors will dismiss it. There's no proof. There's no proof that it works. Of course there isn't. These generic substances, they've been around for hundreds, thousands of years in some cases. There's not a pharmaceutical company that would be responsible to its shareholders if they decided that they're going to invest, you know, $100 million researching alpha lipoic acid. But we know, we know that the things you can do, you don't have to sit there and just accept passive recipient status. So I was watching this TV show with Shannon. It's a doctor show. And in it, the patients are flopping around in a bed with some weird symptom, waiting for the brilliant doctor to come up with a thunderstruck diagnosis and miraculously cure them. It's great TV. It's not real. Most of the time, the intensive care unit of hospitals is filled with dying patients with not much life left, with a lot of expensive comfort level handholding as they trickle toward the final destination. We don't want to be there. I don't want you to be there. You know, if medicine has a cure that doesn't rob you of vitality, we'll consider that. When it comes to prostate cancer, that pathway is not open. So we take it upon ourselves. You're combining the best advice we can acquire. My purpose in developing the protocol, that is pedigree protocol, I named it after myself, why not? If it's terrible, then I'm responsible. If it's great, then good for you. Is to preserve healthy vitality, first and foremost. And then apply things that have potential to help. Now, among those are nutraceuticals. We'll talk about some of them. I'm going to give you my opinion. We'll give them a letter grade. It's an A, B, or C with regard to evidence of benefit for prostate cancer. Now, how do we come up with those grades? It based upon abundance of studies. How many are out there? Clinical experience, how do other people fare when they're on this? It is not based upon proof of outcome. Those type of studies are not doable, folks. So do not interpret or do not misinterpret the lack of proof of benefit of the absence of potential value, important separations. So part of my objective is to not have you choke on 82 supplements. There's a lot of promotional um, proprietary uh, stuff out there on the internet. I get it. You're looking for a prostate cancer treatment and you come up with a bazillion protocols. So first, we're looking for redundancy. How often does it come up in studies? How good is it? There are levels. One of them is theoretical. Based upon the pharmacologic apt, uh, principles or pharmacological characteristics of this supplement, we believe that it can help. Then there is in vitro, you know, Petri dish. Let's take a look at this, see if it kills cancer cells. The next step oftentimes is mice. They call them murine studies. Apparently, 
we don't have a big lobby protecting the well-being of mice because after all, we, we give them cancer, often human cancer, so that we can see how it works. And the way we see how it works oftentimes is waiting for them to die or euthanizing them to dissect them. I gotta be careful, maybe we'll launch a, mo a mouse lobby. Anyhow, it's to mankind's benefit that we have these studies. The next step, clinical experience. There's in vitro evidence. There is animal study evidence. How about humans? Well, in some cases, there are actually some small studies. We'll talk about those. So one of my uh, most strongly recommended supplements is alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid is a naturally occurring substance that the body makes. It's made in the mitochondria of your cells. It's critical to your health and vitality. It is a super potent antioxidant. It neutralizes free radicals. This is one of the reasons why it's made in the mitochondria. The process of producing energy, of ATP making energy, is um, productive of free radicals. Left unto itself, that would be very damaging to our health. But the body has balance called a redox balance, right? Antioxidants, free radicals, these things are in balance. Alpha lipoic acid is one of the things the body makes to help balance that. But there's a problem, folks. As we get older, we make less of it. So I love alpha lipoic acid as an anti-aging health support supplement. But what about cancer? Fascinating effect that it can have on cancer. It turns out that it can affect the conversion of how energy is utilized. It helps to block uh, an enzyme called pyru pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is what the body uses to properly produce energy, a process called aerobic phosphorylation. It's the, what we normally use, what your cells thrive upon. Oxygen turns into ATP through the chemical process in the cell. Oxygen, ATP, energy, life for the cells. All is good. The pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase breaks down some of that pyruvate dehydrogenase, thereby balancing the amount of oxygen energy production. When cancer arises, it can thrive in what's known as an aerobic glycolysis. That's when cancer prefers this form of energy. Normally, y'all have perhaps exercised to the point where you feel your muscles burn. It's lactic acid. That's anaerobic glycolysis. Not enough oxygen. You're working really hard in the gym. Leads to the burning sensation in the muscle. A normal process. Cancer flips that around. It takes a, an enriched oxygenated environment. And instead of making... ATP through the normal phosphorylation pathway, it makes it by, by lactic acid as a byproduct or aerobic glycolysis. Unique to cancer, that's their preferred energy method. So if we could do something to deprive them of their preferred energy, that would be a good thing. And what the alpha lipoic acid can do is downgrade the pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase so it doesn't destroy the necessary enzyme to propel healthy energy production. So it shifts, it makes the cancer move away from its preferred energy. It doesn't absolutely kill it, but we wanna make it hard for cancer cells to thrive, hard for them to reproduce. You don't do this by fasting, people. This is done with alpha lipoic acid. Dose I recommend, if you're fighting cancer, at least 600 milligrams a day. In some countries, it's used as a prescription agent. 600 milligrams three times a day has been utilized to help with diabetic neuropathy. It can help with autoimmune processes. As I mentioned, one of my favorite um, life-extending, youth-enhancing supplements that I take every day. It also appears to help prevent metastatic spread of cancer, something that's called the uh, mesenchymal, the epithelial mesenchymal transition. It's when cancer cells move out of their, their little location, start to attack things. So alpha lipoic acid, I give that an A, folks. This should be part of your armamentarium. How about melatonin? 
Interesting, right? Melatonin is made from the pineal gland in the brain. It gets released at night as we're sleeping. It's known to be a sleep precursor. In some cases, it can help improve quality of sleep. It doesn't work really great as a uh, knockout, go to sleep drug. If you've got insomnia, it's been my experience, melatonin is not usually the solution to the problem. However, it's a powerful antioxidant. It also has an effect on the um, cancer cells. There's something called the matrix metalloproteinase, MMP. Matrix metalloproteinase is, think of that as like the glue between the cells, kind of keeps them tight and connected. For cancer to metastasize, it likes to break down that glue and penetrate cells. So if we could do something that would be supportive of the, the uh, matrix metalloproteinases, it would potentially create a physical barrier to cancer cells moving forward. This is part of um, Dr. Linus Pauling's theory on how cancer could be prevented. And one of the reasons he advocated vitamin C, because cancer behaves like scurvy, where it breaks down tissue. So protecting it is helpful. Melatonin does that. It helps to support the glue between the cells. What dose should you use? Talk about that in a moment. But first, a study. This study was done on people with advanced prostate cancer. They had already gone the route of conventional medicine, which I'm recommending you think twice about, folks. Think twice. And in this study, the folks on melatonin survived an average of 153 months compared to 64 months on those who didn't take it. That's a pretty big difference for something as benign as melatonin. Hey, if this were a chemotherapeutic drug that made you puke and lose your hair, I wouldn't be signing up for that. But melatonin? Yeah, mark me present. The dose variable is between 3 to 20 milligrams. My approach, I advocate 20 milligrams in the evening tolerable, safe. In the study, there were no adverse effects. Clinically, we have not seen adverse effects. Can you take it in the morning? Well, maybe. Uh, it is synchronized with your circadian rhythm. So ideally, an evening dose is preferred. Remember though, anything you do to help you fight your prostate cancer to improve prosthetic health has to be consistent. And do not over-rely on a PSA number. If you start supplements and a month later the PSA goes up from 10 to 12, it doesn't mean they're failing. It means that the PSA went up. Two separate things. Now, I like to see it stay plateaued, but the most important variable, your vitality, how you're feeling, how things are going. So melatonin, okay, that gets an A as well. Why? It is a global antioxidant. It's extraordinarily safe, natural substance. I like natural stuff. Another one from an African bark called Pygium bark. Pygium is and one of those ancient remedies. It's been around for centuries. The bark is utilized to treat uh, an array of maladies. One of the things that supplements have in common, almost all of them have some degree of antioxidative value. It's really hard to know exactly what's working when it comes to supplements because they are so varied in their effect. I think because of that is one of the reasons doctors tune out, just because it's too complicated. They'd rather give you a pill. But this is worth adding. So what we found in a study, this was at mice, the mouse study, but it supported the in vitro research as well, that the uh, significant reduction in prostate cancer incidence, that is the onset of prostate cancer, went down uh, in, the, in the mice that had the pygium bark, it was 35% incidence of prostate cancer and those without it was 65. So there's some evidence of possible benefit. Human studies are really lacking and uh, it does have a high degree of safety. So the pygium, I'm gonna give that a, a B, only because it doesn't have as good a quality of evidence as alpha lipoic acid and melatonin. So put those two first. If you have extra money and you don't mind swallowing another thing, the pygium bark is a reasonable consideration. The dose on that is generally between 50 and 100 milligrams. All right, one more. Stay awake with me. Come on. Home stretch now, folks. Home stretch. 
looking at nettle root. Nettle root is a plant substance. Now, this substance has been shown to have pretty good effect on prosthetic hypertrophy. There are studies that show decreased um, frequency of urination, less waking up at night, less urgency, kind of nice things. And most men, most of you, if you have some prostate cancer in your gland, it's most common to also have prostatic hypertrophy. They're two separate things. They respond to different kinds of treatment, but they live in the same neighborhood and they can't have overlapping symptoms. So although nettle root is a, I'll give it a C when it comes to cancer, because there's not strong evidence of its value against prostate cancer, but I'm going to give it an A when it comes to lower urinary tract symptoms, LUTS called LUTS by doctors. Urgency, frequency, the um, dose range for the nettle root, it can go up to 1,000 milligrams, but I advocate it at about 500, trying to strike a balance between cost, benefit, and potential value. Now, if you use these things, give it a three-month cycle and log yourself. You know, how are you doing? How frequent is your urination? How much are you waking up at night? Putting supplements to work, your lifestyle. So remember, men, it's just as important the man that has the disease as the disease that has the man. Now, let me reassure you, even if you do everything perfectly, even if you do everything as good as you can, your disease can still progress. Perhaps it will do so not as rapidly. That's less of a comfort as not at all, right? My goal for you, for most men, for myself, is to die with prostate cancer cells buried in my gland. Because we know if you live long enough, you're probably going to get some. But I also want you to have peace of mind, knowing that you put forth best efforts with best information, with the best objective of success. Be confident, stay strong, keep fighting cancer like a man. I look forward to talking to you next time. More to come on these supplements. We're going to go through the grading system so that you'll have a full understanding about how you may want to apply them. I'll talk to you next time, team.